नमस्ते निहाव बॉन्जो अवलाव हॅलो वेलकम टू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ ट्रान्सलेशन अ व्हेरी गुड इव्हनिंग अँड वॉम वेलकम टू एव्हरी वन इन दिस युनिट फोर ऑफ एम जी एम ट्वेंटी टू वी आर गोईंग टू टॉक अबाउट ट्रान्सलेशन सो लेट्स बिगिन सो लेट्स बिगिन विथ अ व्हेरी बेसिक क्वेश्चन ऑफ वॉट डज ट्रान्सलेशन मीन as we all know it's made up of two very uh, basic latin words translatum plus latum which means carrying across or bringing across the meaning and if we look at the flow of it there is a source text we find the meaning and that meaning we transfer into the target language we re express it into the target language but the question here is is this process really that simple absolutely not because language itself is not that simple it's an amalgamation of several other things so there are around 7000 languages spoken around the world and each language has its own roots its own history its own traditional values and societal norms and beliefs so a language is made up of several other components so while translating we have to carry the essence of the source language to the target language that's very important and crucial there are basically two point of equivalence which are important in translation formal and functional in formal equivalence the focus is more on the gramma- grammar syntax and structure for example if one is trying to translate a song the focus would more be on the flow of the song uh, the syntax and the grammar and the structure of the song uh, rather than you know uh, any other thing so that's more of the form which is important so that's what formal equivalence is when i talk about functional equivalence it focuses more on you know um, finding the meaning so the translator tries to understand the concept and then they try to translate it into the uh, target language for example ramayan has been translated into several languages and uh, still if you uh, read ramayan either of kamban or of tulsi das the content or the meaning remains the same that's the beauty so that's more of functional equivalence in translation coming to another very important aspect that is importance of translation the foremost important importance that i consider of translation is that it's essential for the growth of national and local culture and literature for example if you want to know about the 16th century european world all you need to do is to go pick up a shakespearean book and then just read it and understand how it must have been if somebody wants to understand an indian culture all they have to read is pick up a ramayan or maybe any other book and then just figure out the culture explore it so yes it's a do to see several other cultures and traditions and explore literature without translation it's really not possible revival of learning so there are several ancient factors cultures ways of living ancient knowledge which has come to us uh, because of translation if translations were not there probably we would be deprived of several mine of uh, you know informations and knowledge that we have today tool of empowerment so language uh, itself is a you know uh, a very powerful tool it's the word that carries you know uh, the power uh, and there have been several movements like uh, to talk about women's movement there have been several writers from different cultures from different uh, nations that have been translated and helped you know um, the women in the other countries to understand their plight and to fight against uh, during a national uh, independence movement uh, it was because of translation that people from different languages in our country came together and they were united and also you know we got informations uh, from uh, britishers and other countries and we could use it as a tool to empower ourselves uh enrichment of languages uh, so what happened when we translate something uh, gradually the words our words become part of the other language and the words from the other language become part of our language for example dangri dangri is a very local word so dangri was first worn by uh you know laborers from dongar area in uh, bombay and gradually it became part of the vocabulary english vocabulary bungalow basically means a bengali house which gradually went on to become an english word same way train or cricket these are english words however we know the hindi hindi words for these uh, you know same same words but we prefer to use it as you know 
it is train cricket nobody says law patinga we need i mean um, i hardly know someone so yes you know it enriches the languages in the process uh necessary for effective and empathetic communication between different cultures imagine if we didn't know how to you know translate and if we didn't know how to translate our feelings in different languages probably we would be deprived of communicating with any any person uh, who is uh, who speaks the other language so yeah it's really really important uh promotes business tourism and commercial growth definitely in this globalized world if we want to promote um, our business or anything it's utmost important to uh, know the other language and to be able to translate now when we talk about the scope of translation the scope is as wide as you can imagine right from government job uh, desktop to the secretarial job from publication houses where the books are being translated on every day basis print and electronic media the news channels are you know there in different languages the print media is in different languages they all are into bilingual or uh, publications uh everybody needs translation in travel and tourism especially when you are inviting people from other countries uh even you know as a guide or someone you definitely need to know the other language for business expansion for legal transaction there are legal battles between uh, people from different background and different languages and it becomes very crucial to know the language and to have the exact accurate translation for research and the advertising industry like you would see one ad in several languages running uh, on the tv uh, especially on the youtube so if you are in bengal you would see the same ad in bangla and if i am in maharashtra i would see the same ad in marathi so yeah there and obviously in film and television because now this each film is being translated into multiple languages so definitely the scope of translation is immense and so is the job opportunity in this sector moving on to the methods of translation there are several types words for words sense for sense literal or faithful translation creative or free translation full translation partial translation adaptation appropriation transcreation and transliteration word to word is basically where you replace one word to the other like roti for bread uncle for chacha uh creative or free translation is the most popular one where you take the liberty and you try to convey the sense or the essence of what's been said in the source language rather than focusing on words there are some translation uh, which are done fully that's what we call full translation in some translation you would see that they are only partially translated like certain songs where you would see that certain part of the song has been retained from the source language that's what we call partial translation adaptation is basically uh, used in plays or uh, poetry or theater purpose in appropriation you take the text far from the source language and uh, you try to appropriate it and you try to add on to it so in a ideal kind of translation uh, several methodologies are used together to bring in uh, the holistic meaning now let's see the process of translation essentially there are three phases of translation analysis transference and restructuring analysis means that a translator tries to first decode the message in the source text and understand its meaning on various parameters then a translator tries to transmit that information from source text to target text the translator keeps in mind that the communicative value is conveyed as well as the most important information in the source text is also present in the target text the last phase is restructuring wherein approx uh, approximation can happen from for the source text into target text to make it most suitable for the end user now let's focus our attention on literary translation there are two distinct approach when it comes to literary translation 
one which believes that translation is a little art and there can be creativity and flexibility used to enhance meaning. The other which believes that translators do not have much of a choice and there are very less creative angle added. Let's see some common challenges that uh, is posed while a literary work is translated. The first and the foremost challenge is the difference between the structure, grammar and lexical unit of source and target text. The second challenge is around the unique vision or temperament of the writer and the need of expressing that feeling. Sometimes a translator's for translators, it can be difficult to understand that emotion and express it. Another challenge which is more commonly seen is for poetic work and visual description, which in general have a sound effect and also carry a creative angle. At times during translation, that sound effect, rhyme, alliteration, etc. may get lost. Another challenge and which is one of the most important challenge is the cultural aspect. Due to the influence of culture in the source language, there are certain text or uh, words or sentences like metaphors, proverbs, idioms, etc. which can not be translated from source text to uh, target text and translators do face a lot of challenge while dealing with this aspect. Okay, since we are all students of media course, what are the principles that has to be kept in mind while translating for media? Very simply, it has to be simple and short. But while keeping it simple and short, we also have to make sure that it catches the attention of the reader or the viewer. And while keeping the attention intact, you also have to make sure that the same sense has been translated, which was there in the source language. There are three very basic principles that one needs to keep in mind. Use of short paragraph, not too much information in one paragraph. Each paragraph should have one major information and each paragraph should handle, you know, um, uh, a very basic information in entirety. There should be short sentences which definitely help to understand it easily and doesn't let the interest be lost. And you have to use the language which is the spoken language because when we about talk about the media, there are people from all walks of life. So we cannot keep it very difficult or a very complicated um, genre. The French media uh, the language must be formal, it should be crisp and it should be something that an educated as well as a neoliterate can understand and definitely the headline must be catchy. Moving on to electronics media, uh, the conversational language is preferred over a very formal language. The airtime is limited and we have to make sure that whatever information is being conveyed has to be chronological and in a simple and crisp way because the viewer cannot go back and review it. Uh, and uh, definitely it has to match up with the visuals. Moving on to films and television, uh, it's definitely growing as a very vast industry and thanks to this we are now aware of different cultures, art and literature forms. Uh, not just words but through multiple uh, semiotic channels the information is translated here. Uh, the characters, the music, the background music, everything. And the main translation modes of this particular uh, unit are dubbing and voiceover and subtitles. Subtitling is not at all an easy job. The most uh, important aspect is while writing the subtitle, one must be aware of the cultural values of the target language and the source language. It should uh, maintain the pace with the screen. And again, since uh, you know a, a viewer has to read it in a limited time, it should be very small, crisp, and clear. Dubbing uh, is definitely something you know uh, which should focus more on the lip movement. So it should carefully match with the lip movement of the source language. It's for the ears. It's not to be read. So it should look natural when it's coming in the different language. And uh, it should just try to keep the content raw and uh, use the flair of the characters and should also try to retain some words which are, you know, uh, jargons of that particular language. That would help a lot. 
moving on to understand the strategies of translation for media the first focus is the audience a tra media translator should understand the need of the target audience their maturity level and their expectation next is the culture the final target text should blend with the cultural aspect and also convey the right meaning then another strategy can be around idea so that a clean clear and crisp idea is delivered the next strategy that a media person can adopt is to have a wide knowledge base and familiarity of tools like glossary encyclopedia etc to produce a very effective target text another strategy that can be applied is the style so that the writing or the last translation is very attractive and very readable and the last stage or the last strategy that can be used for media translation is a review process wherein a person or a media translator should review the final target text and also seek an expert view with this we come to the conclusion of this unit let us summarize what we have learned so far translation is an art and it's a complicated work it requires immense amount of patience knowledge and hard work it has bridged a gap between two cultures languages and customs and it has a very wide scope there are essentially three principles of translation for media the use of short paragraphs short sentences and spoken language since media writing is very crisp and clean translation should also follow the same rule for so that the readers can understand the intent a translator is a recreator he and she or she should have a clear understanding of the source language and the target language also the cultural and the various background associated thank you for listening and hope you enjoyed this session